What's cooking everybody? Dave Altizer here in Victoria Beach, Laguna, California. Today we're talking about the Hasselblad X1D. So we've actually had the X1D for the last three months now and it's been a joy to use. In fact, if you've noticed, our thumbnail game has gone up substantially because we've been taking all of our thumbnail pictures on this channel using the X1D. If you haven't seen our 80 millimeter review with the X1D, then check it out in the icon above. At the beginning of the review, I go over a brief history of Hasselblad and why it's so expensive and why it's such a special brand. Back in 2016, when this camera was announced, this was the only medium format mirrorless camera. Now, at the end of 2018, we have the Fujifilm GFX 50S and the upcoming 50R, not to mention the 100 megapixel Fuji camera that was announced at Photokina. So there's now more affordable options if you want medium format mirrorless cameras from Fujifilm. So why would you buy or consider using the X1D? So in this video, we're going to answer the questions is this camera relevant in 2018? Is medium format actually better than full frame? And is the X1D worth the hefty price tag? First things first, this camera is expensive. In fact, when it first came out, it was $9,000. Right now on B&H, it's on sale at $6,500. I think that's the going rate everywhere else. And whoa, that was a huge wave. When it first came out, it was $9,000. I feel like I'm gonna get wet pretty soon. For five to six thousand dollars, I'm just okay. So uh, we had to move forward a little bit because the tide's coming up, and I don't know if you saw those previous shots, but those waves—they were gonna like get me wet. Anyways, the price for this camera is definitely a big turnoff for a lot of people, especially when you compare it to the upcoming Fujifilm GFX 50R coming in at $4,500. And it has a flip out screen, a lot of more pro features with autofocus, a joystick. That's not really what this camera is all about. This camera has got mojo. It's got style. When I pick it up and hold it, I'm just inspired to use it. It feels amazing in the hands. This camera really reminds me a lot of a Leica camera, or if you're going to compare it to cars, a Porsche. I would say this only once. In Germany, we say Porsche. Or, I don't know, what's another ca fancy car? McLaren. 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 This camera looks like it's milled out of a solid block of aluminum, like an Apple laptop, and this camera just screams luxury in all ways. But when you start using it, it just feels super slow because this camera is two years old. It's using a contrast-based autofocus system that is not as reliable as other contrast-based systems that I've used in the past. The way that you select autofocus points is using only this touch screen here, which is okay, but I would rather have a joystick. This camera really seems to be going with style over practicality, which can be a turnoff for people. I'm gonna list the specs real fast, and then we'll talk about image quality. The X1D has a 50 megapixel sensor with 16-bit color, 14 stops of dynamic range, and Hasselblad's color science. The camera can also go up to 25,600 ISO. However, I would not recommend going up that high. The camera can shoot up to 2.3 frames per second, so you're definitely not going to be using this for sports anytime soon. You can use the central shutter of this camera at 60 minute exposure time all the way up to one two thousandth of a second, which is amazing for professionals. We've got a 2.36 megapixel EVF, a three inch touchscreen, dual SD card slot, built-in Wi-Fi, USB 3 type C. I could sit here and list off specs all day long, but instead, I think it's better to just let the images speak for themselves. We're gonna run some of our favorite pictures that we've taken over the last couple of months. Let us know in the comment section below which ones were your favorites. Let's go.
camera just creates inspiration for me to go out and take pictures. Every image that I take on this, and I seriously mean every image, looks amazing. Having fast lenses like the 80 millimeter f1.9, getting that ridiculous bokeh, the medium format look is just a look that you can't replicate any other way. Of course, with a full frame camera and an f1.4 lens, you can get crazy bokeh, but the amazing thing about medium format is the ability to use lenses that give you the compression of, for example, a 50 millimeter, but the wideness of a 35 millimeter. So you get the benefit of not having a wide angle distortion, but way more in the image. The Hasselblad color science is something that you just can't replicate any other way. Of course, the Fuji film does have its own look and that is a Fuji look. This Hasselblad camera has a Hasselblad look and it's a look that I really like. In fact, I barely had to do any post-processing with these images in RAW. The only thing that I would do is mess around with that dynamic range, pull my highlights down and boost my shadows but usually straight out of camera, even with the auto white balance, the colors just looked amazing. Skin tones just pop. It has this 3D rendering that is just unlike anything I've ever seen. If I had the money, I would so buy this camera. And that's just it. If you can afford this camera, it's an amazing camera to walk around all day with. But even if you can afford it, the lack of functionality on this camera might be a big turnoff. The focusing system on here, it's contrast based only. It's not using phase detect. So it's not as reliable as what I'm used to on older cameras. It's also slow, very, very slow. In fact, this camera takes literally eight seconds to turn on. You heard me right. You push the power button, one 1,000, two 2,000, three 3,000, four 1,000, you get it. You might say, well, maybe I should just leave the camera on all the time. That way I don't have to wait for it to turn on. Well, that would be a great idea if the battery life was amazing and it's not, unfortunately. This camera does have focus peaking built into it so you can manually focus and make sure that your focus is on point. It also has a nice magnification feature. The problem with manual focusing on this camera is these lenses are focused by wire. Manually focusing using a geared lens is so much easier and so much cleaner because it's much more precise than using a focus by wire system. One of the reasons why this camera is so small is because they've removed the shutter mechanism from being in the camera to being in the lens. We have a leaf shutter mechanism inside all of the XCD lenses for this camera. You can shoot in a variety of shutter speeds using the leaf shutter with flash sync up to one two thousandth of a second. So having flash sync up to one two thousandth of a second is preferred with those portrait photographers who are used to using Hasselblad systems. The cons, however, with this camera with having a leaf shutter in the lens means that if you want to adapt lenses on this camera, you have to shoot an electric electronic shutter mode. That would be fine if the electronic shutter was good, but I've found that the rolling shutter performance on this camera is awful. We have Rory White here in his Los Angeles studio. We just walked around the city with the Hasselblad X1D. What do you think? It felt amazing in my hand and we walked for a long time and it just dangled from my fingers and it felt very secure. The ergonomics are splendid. The size, you can't just glaze over the fact that it's incredibly small and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling tomorrow and I've had to uh, choose an SLR system, uh, a whole Canon system that's separate from my Hasselblad system which is, uh, you know, I've got a, a big old uh, 503CXI and uh, I, I just, it's a lot of work to travel with the thing and so this little Hasselblad would, would solve many of those problems. Um, the sensor is nice and big and fat, and so if you needed to use this image uh, to print from large, then it, it 50 megapixels? Yeah, 50 megapixels. It packs a wallop, so you've, you've buckled your safety belt and you could probably come up with something that, that could go uh, four feet by four feet and mm -hmm. it would hold up looking pretty good. It's getting dark here in Laguna, so I'm gonna wrap this thing up with an overall thought, I really love this camera. Regardless of the price, regardless of its downsides, regardless of the slowness, at the end of the day, the image quality off of this thing is amazing. The lenses are amazing. I really, really love this 45 millimeter. It's so small and light. In fact, my Sony with a Sigma art lens is heavier than this camera. This camera body is actually roughly the same size as an EOS R. 
And if you compare it to Fujifilm's medium format cameras, this camera is still smaller than those cameras. So this is truly the most portable medium format camera in existence today, even though this camera is two years old. What excites me most about this system is Hasselblad is continuing to advance the lens lineup with this camera. At Photokina, we saw four lenses that are brand new for this system, which makes me hopeful for whatever is coming next, i.e. X2D. I really think Hasselblad has listened to their customers with the issues that I've listed previously, and hopefully with the X2D, we'll get a lot of advancements like, well, turning on faster, faster autofocus, maybe a joystick, maybe a flip out screen. Some of those things would be great, but the only thing that I ask Hasselblad to do is keep that amazing image quality because at the end of the day, the Hasselblad X1D takes some of the most beautiful images I've ever seen. We hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I sure have enjoyed using the X1D over these last few months. If you did, give us a thumbs up. We just moved to California. We're excited to be here in Laguna Beach. Connor, who's behind the camera, say hi, Connor. There's his hand. Yeah, my family and Connor have moved to California from Nashville, Tennessee. It's been a long process. We're happy to finally be here to be settled. This is our first official review here in California. Much more to come. So make sure to stay subscribed to see all of the new videos on this channel. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. I'm not giving this camera back to Hasselblad. See you next time. Well, any uh, parting words to our viewers, not even related to this camera, but what can you say to inspire a young photographer? Uh, shoot, the, shoot everyone that you know, and don't be afraid of starting with uh, people who are nobodies. Don't play by the rules that everybody else plays by. So if, you, if, if all the rules are being defined by what you're seeing on Instagram and it's all beautiful people and you look around your neighborhood and you don't see any uh, beautiful people, um, shoot the people that you know and uh, shoot them for their character mm -hmm. and define the rules according to your own rule book because then you'll come up with something called a vision, a personal vision, which is something that uh, you might have to sacrifice if you ever become successful commercially um, and that personal vision will go with you for the rest of your life and you'll fall in love with that personal vision and you have no idea what that is until you start shooting the people that are immediately available to you so don't um, don't don't wait until you get to the beautiful people yeah shoot the people that you know and that'll be beautiful enough and shoot with the gear that you have oh absolutely an iphone an old dslr yeah make lemonade out of the lemons that you've got uh, you, you'll amaze yourself at how much of a genius you are if you just use the tools at hand. In fact, that's what people call genius, is when people do extraordinary things with less.